Hi, I'm Ben Greasley, and in this video we're going to look through Arnold's shader settings. We have a lot of different shaders we can use within Arnold, and we're going to focus on three main ones. The AI standard shader, the AI skin shader, and the AI hair shader. And we're going to start off by looking at the AI standard shader. I have a simple scene set up to go through our different shaders of a head sculpt, a backdrop, and a simple point light. I have Arnold enabled and I have the default render settings. At the moment my head sculpt just has a Lambert shader applied onto it and if I start the IPR render within Arnold I should be able to see this. I'm rendering this using a 2.2 GHz MacBook Pro with 8 GB of RAM so your workstation should get much better performance from the IPR. The IPR is a great renderer which allows me to quickly spin about in my scene, change preferences and settings, and get very quick feedback in my render. I find it much easier to work this way than going to a final render each time. And I can see that my character is a basic grey Lambert shape. And so I'm going to apply the AI standard shader to it. Immediately we see the IPR viewport updates and I now have a standard shader within my shader tree and I can see the different parameters that we have. I'm going to start off by looking at the diffuse shader parameters and the different options we have. I have a color parameter which simply changes the diffuse color of my character. I have a weight which will change the amount of the diffuse that I'm using. I have a roughness amount, which will change how rough the surface is or how smooth the surface is. And I have a backlight. And the backlight allows me to create single surface objects, which would then have the appearance of paper or very kind of thin cloth. So if I can see on the inside of my head sculpt, if I increase my backlighting, I will see that I get a semi-translucent polygon happening here within the roughness. I also have extended controls which allow me to change how the direct and indirect light affects my character. So my direct diffuse scale is set to 1 at the moment. If I drop this down you will see that the direct contribution has dropped off in our scene and now all I'm seeing is indirect light on our character. I can pull this back up. If I drop my indirect light down I can see that I lose my indirect contribution onto my character as well. The default values of 1 are realistic and should rarely be touched. Whenever you change this to anything other than 1, you'll have a non-physically accurate response from your shader. The specular controls rough reflections within our scene. If I turn my diffuse weight down to 0, so we have a black object, and then start to increase my specular weight, we'll see how this looks, giving us nice specular reflections. The roughness controls how blurry these reflections should be. So if I pull my roughness down, we will see that we get a very strong reflection coming from all of our objects, as you would with a normal reflection. As I increase my roughness, it becomes far rougher and far more specular in the traditional sense that we would be used to. I'm able to change the color of this reflection using the color parameter. And I'm also able to change how the reflection reacts to our scene using our BRDF controls. At the moment it's set to a Cook Tolerance control. If I change it to a Ward Dewar, I then get my Anisotropy and Rotation controls. And as I pull on my Anisotropy control, we'll see that this gives us a more compressed look. And I can change the direction of this as well, to give me highlights in certain directions. But I'm going to put this back to Cook Tolerance. I'm also able to set this as a Fresnel reflection, so it affects based on the angle of incidence on our scene. So if I turn this on, and we can see that they are giving us good specular reflections based on this reflectance at normal. And as I increase this, this will bring some of my reflection back, but it's still relating into the normal direction. As with the diffuse, I have extended controls that allow me to affect the direct and indirect specular scale for my specular reflections. So if I pull my direct specular scale down, we'll see that my direct contribution for the specular is gone. If I pull my indirect specular scale down, it removes the indirect specular reflection for our shader. 
The Reflection tab controls the indirect reflection in our scene. This will not show uh, direct light sources such as HDRI maps or lights. This will show everything else that bounces within our scene. So as I increase my weight, we can see that I'm getting the floor reflected in our character, but I'm not getting the light popping up in our scene. If I wanted to see the light or a HDRI map, I would need to use the specular method with the roughness set all the way down to zero in order to see that reflection. I also have Fresnel controls so I can see my reflection based on the incidence angle. And my color controls the color of my reflection. The main difference between the Reflection tab and the Specular tab is the absence of a roughness control in the Reflection tab. In other words, we use this just for perfect mirror reflections without any roughness at all. And this is very quick to render in comparison to the Specular method. My Refraction tab controls how rays pass through my object. If I start my IPR, I can see I have a diffuse object. So I'm going to drop my diffuse weight down to zero and then start to increase my refraction weight to see how this looks. I'm going to increase this all the way to 1. And there are two problems with our scene to begin with. The first is I'm getting all of these different black objects within my scene, and that is being caused by my refraction ray depth. As we've seen in the previous video, we need to specify how many times a ray can bounce in a scene before it is being killed, and what's happening here is the rays are not bouncing enough. So I'm going to go to my render settings, to my ray depth, and I'm going to increase my refraction ray depth to 6. Now I will not see this in my IPR viewport, I will need to close the viewport and start it again, but upon doing so I'm seeing that most of my errors are now gone. I'm getting a couple around the ears, but they're very slight. And I could increase my ray depth further to get rid of these. So let's increase it to 8 and see how that looks. Now I can see I'm getting rid of most of those problems. The other area that I'm having problems is that my shadow is still here. This is an entirely transparent object, and so I shouldn't have any shadows. And this is because Arnold will set all objects to be opaque by default. It does this to make render times much, much quicker, but we need to disable this because we have now told Arnold that this is a transparent object. And so I can go to my Skin Shape, my Arnold tab, and I can turn off opaque. By doing this, Arnold will now consider this to be a transparent object. It takes more computing to render these type of objects, so you should make sure that this is only turned off for our transparent objects. If I then go back to my render settings and increase my IOR to 1.55, I will see now I'm getting distortion from my background based on this angle. The color controls the basic color of our object, and this is a global color, so this will not change based on the depth. But we can see that this is changing our shadow color accordingly. My roughness controls how rough my refractions should be through my object in a similar way to the specular roughness. As we increase the roughness, we will see that the refractions become far more blurry, like frosted glass. And we also have controls for transmittance which changes the color based on the depth of our object. So as I change my transmittance color, we can see that deeper parts of our mesh are a much darker color than the lighter parts around the ears. Within the standard shader, we also have a basic subsurface scattering setting, which will allow us to provide some basic subsurface controls. If I enable my IPR render, this is just a basic diffuse amount set to it, and then start to increase the weight of my subsurface scattering, I'll see that nothing is changing. And this is because, by default, the Arnold subsurface scattering is considered on a point cloud basis, which would appear in the final render, but not in the IPR. If I go into my render settings, we will see that there is an option to have ray-traced subsurface scattering as well. If I enable this, it then changes to a ray traced amount, and this works in a very similar way to the other samples, and it's multiplied by the AA samples. But this will work within my IPR render, and is the preferred method of calculating subsurface scattering. So now if I go back into my IPR, I can see I just have my diffuse model, and as I increase my subsurface scattering weight, I will see that I am now getting a subsurface contribution. This is far too bright at the moment, but we can tone it into the look that we're after. I'm able to use the color control to specify the global color of my subsurface scattering. In this case, a general red color. And the radius specifies how deep 
the ray should pass into my object. As I increase this, I'll see that my rays are able to pass deeper within my scene, and as I have it less, they'll only be able to go shallower. But we also have the choice of specing this on a per-channel basis. And what I want to be able to do is make my ears light up within my scene. So imagine I have lights on the either side of it. And I do that by increasing the red channel of my radius. So by increasing this, I'll see that I now get a far greater red contribution. I'm going to increase this further. And so now I can see my red channel is passing through my ears and I'm getting far more subsurface scattering in that area. While this subsurface scattering control is good for an object with one layer of subsurface, such as milk or marble, it's not really enough for us to create realistic human skin. And for that we have a separate shader, the subsurface scattering skin shader. So with my character selected, I'm going to assign a new subsurface scattering skin shader. And I can see that this is broken down into groups that we're going to look at shortly. But first we want to see what this render looks like. And we can see straight away without making any changes that we're getting a very good subsurface scattering look from our render. And the shader is broken down into a few main groups. We have the diffuse surface group, which is specifying the surface color of our character. We have the SSS weight, which is specifying how much subsurface we should be applying. If I drop this to zero, you see it'll just be a surface material. I can pull it back up again. And then we have three different scatter groups, and these are referring to three different layers of skin on the character. We have the shallow scatter, which has a light color, a certain amount of weight and radius. This is the one nearest to the surface. We have the mid scatter, which is a slightly darker color, has a slightly less weight, but a greater radius as it's further into the skin and it penetrates deeper. And the deep scatter, which is the lowest level, and this is going to be the reddest, the closest to our blood color, has a very strong weight and a very large radius because it is so deep within the character. If I change any of these, we'll see its effect. So if I change my radius for the shallow scatter and drop this down, we will see that it now has no effect as it cannot penetrate at all into the surface of our character. And if I push it deeper, we'll see that our character has a, a thicker top layer of skin. But I'm going to put it back to its original setting. Again with the mid scatter and the deep scatter, that each one should be deeper than the previous. If I change my deep scatter radius to a much lower number, you'll see that the skin appears far flatter as that color is far closer to the surface. So I'm going to make sure that that's nice and low. We also have two different sets of reflections. We have a primary reflection and a secondary reflection. And this allows us to have a reflection similar to the specular reflection, which is large and glossy and giving us general specular, and then a far sharper reflection over the top. You get a similar effect to this with car paint, where you have a glossy and a sharp reflection. And we get the same on human skin, but it is far more subtle. And we have the controls here to do so. And these are standard reflection controls of color, weight, roughness, and then specular weight and reflection weight. We also have Fresnel reflections with them and how far we can get them to fall off. The third shader we are going to look at is the AI hair shader. I have a simple scene set up with a backdrop, an area light, and a character with some hair for us to work on. If I do an IPR render, we'll see that this is a very basic Maya hair type and we want to assign the Arnold hair shader to this character. To do that, I select my character's hair, I go to my hair system shape, and down to the Arnold tab. I have to enable two buttons, I have to hit the override hair button to make sure that this shader will override the default hair shader, and I have to specify which shader it's going to be overridden with. And I do that by going to my hypershade, creating a new hair shader, and assigning it to my hair shader slot. And now when I render, it will render using the Arnold hair shader. The hair shader is broken down into a few main groups. The root color controls the root color of our hair. The tip color will control the tip color of our hair. However, we're not seeing an apparent effect at the moment because of the specular color, which is applied over the top. If I change my specular color to something more in keeping, 
we can see that this looks much better. The ambient diffuse parameter changes the shading method we use for our hair. The indirect diffuse parameter controls how much GI light the shader will bounce, and as I increase this, our hair will become lighter as it bounces more of the GI light. The gloss parameter specifies how sharp our specular highlights should be. The lower the number, the blurrier the specular reflection, and the higher the number, the more glossy it will become. The specular amount controls how much specular reflection we want within our shot. And the opacity controls how opaque the hair becomes. As I lower this value, our hair will become more transparent.